possibilities are endless. <laughs> or six. <laughs> There's six ways those three things can happen. But I don't know, like I saw this happen, I got really happy, I'm like, oh, like, uh, getting high and eating sandwiches, that's awesome. And then he paid for his stuff, and he left. And then the guy running the register, he sort of turned and looked at me, and he went, kids today. And I realized, oh, shit, I'm in my 30s. Because that was the moment my youth ended, when I was asked to identify with this man's envious anger towards youth. And I was like, oh, man, my fellow adult is going to be very upset when I pay for these cigarettes with this handful of nickels and dimes. Because, <laughs> like, I'm an adult now. I'm saving the quarters for the six-pack shop. I don't know what it gets off. So, uh, except I'm 34 years old, and uh, a lot of my friends, they're having babies now, and that's awesome, because I get to do my favorite thing ever, which is curse in front of babies. It always makes me happy. It always does. And I don't curse at babies. I, like, I don't grab a baby and lock eyes with it and go, fuck. <laughs> fuck. Like, like I was the world's angriest metronome. Like, I'm not going to do that. But if it comes up in the course of conversation, it makes me happy. And, uh, my friend, he was just down for Christmas last weekend. He sort of knows about that joke. So like, he gave me like his one-year-old. He's like, do it, do, do it, fuck, fuck, fuck with the baby. And I'm like, I can't actually do that. Like, it could feel terrible. But I realized it's because I'm not a parent. Because my friend immediately grabbed this child and went, fuck, fuck, fuck. And said, that's, sometimes that's what love looks like, Ian. And he shoved the baby bag in my arms and went outside and smoked like 10 cigarettes. And I'm like, oh, you're going to be a little kid who teaches all the other kids the curse words. Remember, it's quality, not quantity. Uh, so, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a scientist. And like, my parents were very supportive of this. And they probably should not have been because like my science experiments when I was a little kid were awful. Like, I remember once I took a Polaroid camera and I took the flash and I put it over my right eye and I took a picture and blinded myself. And then I thought, what would it be like to be blind? And I did the same thing to the other eye. That's mom and dad's little scientist right there. And, like, and I like now like now I'm 34. I work in a warehouse. There's no scientist science going on in that warehouse. But and my, my experiments have not gotten any better in that time. Like okay, so I'm straight, but every once in a while I think you know what? Maybe you're not again. Maybe it's just a cultural like pressure has been put on you. Maybe you're really gay. And that's how I end up watching lots of gay porn. <laughs> and, uh, and it turns out like not interested. Not interested at all. And, uh, but like, I'll, like, I'm still trying, but like, what happens is like, I like, I'll turn the volume down and I'll let my vision blur and I'll turn like Chopin's Nocturnes and it's like I'm looking at a lava lamp. And, like, and then all of a sudden everything snaps back into focus. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be jerking off. <laughs> yeah, about that. But then like a few months later, like, you can't, you can't base anything off of one study. So a few, a few months later, I started thinking to myself, you know what? Maybe I don't like guys with tattoos. Maybe that was a problem. Maybe I like my boys in club. So, so same thing happens so this loud lamp so can. I have to send it off for peer review, see what happens. So uh, I got a new job a few months ago, and when I got the job, they're like, Ian, yeah, you're gonna love it there. Everyone's a nerd like you. And I'm like, okay, but then I go there, and I realized, like, nerds are an umbrella term. There are lots of different types of nerds. And I'm a gaming nerd. I like video games and role-playing games and board games, and everyone at work is an anime nerd. I don't know anything about anime. So I asked the one guy, I'm like, oh, what kind of anime do you like? He's like, oh, I like this, this one, it's called Bible Black. And I don't know what Bible Black is. So I asked him about it, he's like, oh, dude. And there's one scene, the guy's got the shotgun, and it shoved up the woman's vagina. And then he kept talking for 10 minutes. <laughs> he just kept going. Like, I don't know, if you're familiar with Kurt Vonnegut's story diagrams, there's this one where, like, the protagonist it just drops straight down in Ill Fortune. Just goes straight down. That was what was happening to me. And I, as this was happening, I'm like, should have gotten into sports. <laughs> like, just a little bit. Just enough. Just every, other side of the room, everyone's talking about football. It's awesome. Me, like, the abyss is staring back at me at this point. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to do. And I realized, like, this is the choice I've made. Because, like, like we live in a time now where you get to choose to be a nerd. Like, it used to be people would call you a nerd and it was like something put on you, but now you get to choose. You can go to like their e-house about how to become a nerd. And I remember like the moment I chose to be a nerd. I remember like, I was in second grade. I had just moved here from upstate New York and I went out to recess, first day of recess. I'm like, okay, I can go with all the cool kids and play kickball. 
or I can take rocks out of the ground with sticks, all the weirdos. And I chose the rocks out of the ground with sticks because I wanted to know what were under those rocks. There were bugs. There were bugs under those rocks. But now I have to live with the consequences of that decision for my entire life. So uh, I have one more thing for you. Um, so I've decided.